In this video, we are going to calculate the cell potential for a copper 2 and copper cell reacting with the zinc and zinc plus 2 half cell. We are going to calculate the cell potential under standard conditions, meaning that we have a 1 molar concentration of zinc nitrate this is really the spectator ion, so it does not matter what that is. And we've also got a one molar copper sulfate solution. Again, sulfate would be a spectator ion. So our zinc is dissolved in solution as well as the copper. And remember copper two, if we made that cell in the lab, our copper two would be blue in color and then we, in this beaker, we would put a solid piece of copper. And then in the other beaker, we'd have some zinc nitrate dissolved in solution and a solid piece of zinc in that solution. So our standard condition, assuming that we are at 298 degrees Kelvin or 25 degrees Celsius and our solutions are one molar, the E cell comes from those half cell reactions. Copper, copper's potential measured against the hydrogen electrode is plus 0.337 volts. Zinc's reduction potential is negative 0.763 volts. So we could reverse this reaction as we've written here and add that to our copper reduction reaction. And so it's really a matter of choice on the way we'd like to do this. If we write both reactions as reductions, we're going to do subtraction. But if we reverse the order of the reduction so that it shows that metal being oxidized, we'll simply change the sign of that answer and then we'll use Hess's law. We'll add these equations together. The electrons are going to cancel. And the potential that we get out of this standard cell would be a positive 110 volts. So the E cell, it may be easier to remember big number minus small number. So what this minus sign serves to do, I don't know why the lighting is so bad, that minus sign means change the sign to reverse the reaction. So we need to decide if we're just going to stick with the math trick definition or use Hess's law in this case. So if we reverse the sign of the reaction ourselves, then we'll change the sign of that potential. And in that case, we'll add those two reactions. If we just choose to take big number minus small number, this minus sign is reversing the sign of the potential for us. So either way we do that, we'll get 0.337 volts minus negative 0.763 volts. So under normal conditions, standard state conditions, that electrochemical cell would give us a potential of 1.10 volts. And now what I would like to do is run this under non-standard conditions. So that's where we use the Nernst equation. And our temperatures could vary. What I'm going to vary are the concentration units. So the non-standard conditions, which is the Nernst equation, means the potential would be the same cell potential that we measured above using the appendix 
minus 0 0.0592 volts divided by N, the number of electrons transferred. And this uses the log of Q. So Q, remember, is always products over reactants. So if I think about Le Chatelier's principle for a few minutes, if I want this reaction to continue to proceed toward the right, if I make the copper solution more concentrated, so let's do that, if we add more reactants, then Le Chatelier's principle says that that will cause that equilibrium to shift to the right. And if I make the zinc solution more dilute, in a way that's similar to removing products, if I make the solution more dilute than one molar, that will also cause the reaction to continue to proceed to the right. So I'm going to have us calculate non-standard conditions and let's assume our copper, copper two cell and our zinc zinc plus two cell that we have again and we'll say that the concentration of the copper plus two let's make that more concentrated to five molar and we'll make our zinc solution that our zinc electrode is in uh, maybe 0.5 molar And our net ionic equation is up here. So recall that solids and liquids do not go in the equilibrium expression, only solutions or gases. So if I write Q, Q is going to equal our zinc plus two concentration divided by the copper plus two. And if we do that, we're going to get uh, 0.5 on the top divided by 5.0 on the bottom and that should give us a value of 10. So I probably should have worked out an example before I got started doing this because that's when we take the log of 10 we're only going to get a value of 1 but that's all right. So if Q is equal to 10 we'll plug that into here. We already know the standard cell potential which was 1.10 volts and we know that two electrons were transferred in this process. So that's really two moles of electrons. So if I calculate E, that's going to be E cell, 1.10 volts minus 0.0592 volts divided by two, and then I take the log of 10. And I can't find my calculator. No, that's not going to be 10. I knew that didn't look right. 0.5 divided by 5 is going to be 0.01, I believe. 0.5 divided by 5, yeah, 0.1, not 10. So I went the wrong way with my decimal. So that's what was not setting well with me. So if we take the log of 0.1, that's going to give us a negative one. So if I take the log of my second answer, I'll get a negative one for that value. So I'm still calculating this 1.110 volts minus 0.0592 volts divided by two and we said the log of 0.1 that we did on the calculator was negative 1. So this negative and that negative is actually going to cancel to a positive number.
and so our potential for the cell will go up slightly. Plus, now if I take 0 0.0592 and divide that by 2, I get 0 0.0296. So plus 0 0.0296, meaning our cell potential at non-standard conditions. I'm going to add the 1.1 volts to that. So we'll have 1.13 volts. So we'll get a little bit more potential out of these non-standard conditions than we had at our standard condition state. So that was standard. Just like the equation that we used for non-standard calculation of Gibbs free energy, all of this or I should have done it right here. This term corrects for non-standard conditions. So that Q, the reaction quotient, looks just like K. It's always products over reactants. But if our concentrations are not one molar, then that will affect uh, the conditions here. And as we stated earlier, if we look at the net equation for this electrochemical cell, if we had excess of one molar, that is very similar to adding more reactants. And if we had a solution less than one molar of our zinc ion in solution. In effect, that's the same as removing products. So Le Chatelier's principle, just from our initial conditions, Le Chatelier's principle says that this reaction will shift to the right at equilibrium. And a shift to the right is good that means we're shifting toward products. And in this case, a shift to the right meant we got more potential out of that cell. So almost any time we're asked to explain our results, when we're talking about free energy and equilibrium, if we write Le Chatelier's principle down, for that explanation will be correct. So that is a big deal out of the equilibrium chapter. But anytime we upset the balance, the reaction will shift to proceed back toward equilibrium.